let's begin. And we'll make that gentle and yet immediate shift. We'll start organizing around the, the sense of our core. Central organizing structure, feature. The structures can help us structure and does structure us spiritually, embryologically. And so we're returning to our roots. <laughs> Intimacy with all of our personal and interior experiences translates as intimacy with all beings. Without counting, just as a just kind of your own internal measure. We'll start to lengthen out the exhalation. So maybe we start to feel that one-to-one -one ratio, the exhale being at least as long as the inhale. Maybe even a tiny bit lengthier. We're going to just shift that, translate that into alternate nostril breathing. Select a hand, and still with that one to one plus ratio. Inhaling through one nostril. Exhaling out the other. As I situate or inhabit in my back body, I'm feeling the back third of my body, it seems to help breath move in and through my core without having to pull or suck it in. So it might just be a tiny shift in how we're seated
in these final few breath moments, let's allow for a linger between that inhale and the exhale. So it's not an outright hold, you don't have to retain or hold the breath, but just inhaling, lingering in this transition to exhale. So we're just inviting the breath to stay a moment. In the world of food and nutrients, there's a term, bioavailability. And maybe part of that bioavailability is our cellular sensory availability. How do I ready myself to receive and absorb breath, the gift of prana, the gift of life? And just finishing up, we'll finish up uh, whichever round you're working on. And this final round moment, where does the breath go? Where do you sense breath collecting, going, being absorbed? So when you're ready, and we're switching positions here, I've got my right leg straightened out in, uh, in front of me, and the left heel I've placed behind hip. Of course, adjust that in front of your pelvis, if that's a better configuration. Wherever the foot is, widen the knees apart. You may feel a little bit of a, a band of activation or little extra sensation in the groin. Interlace the hands behind the back. Inhale, rooting, feeling the tailbone descend. 
as the neck bones telescope toward the sky. And then exhaling, reach out through the inner right leg all the way to ball of foot. I'm going to gradually start to turn my torso so that the right side of my ribs is facing at my inner right leg. This may feel like a quarter of a twist, a little partial turn here. We'll keep the torso facing this direction, releasing the hands, inhale them out to the sides. So now my right arm is reaching out over the right leg. Exhale. Reach so as to lengthen the right side, right side ribs. And we'll raise that left arm just a smidge. As we were lifting this left arm into the sky, perhaps lightening up that left shoulder, you can feel the rib cage spiraling. as we're maintaining this inner right leg connection. And one more position, left arm reaching into a bit of an extended or an overhead position. And slowly we're reaching this left arm, basically over the right leg. Just that general direction. So even as the other rib cage can continue to spiral, kind of toward the wall, toward the sky, this left shoulder blade can in counter fashion, be spiraling. Toward my right thigh. So my ribs can move in between my shoulder blades. My shoulder blades can move counter or around my ribs and some of you may may have fun grabbing the uh, the bottom of your right foot. And inhaling, we'll unwind. Walk ourselves out of that one. We'll switch sides. So 
together, left leg straightened out. And taking the right heel behind the right hip. And then for your knees or your hips. So three, three positions. First, interlacing the hands behind the back. Inhale, the knuckles move down, the tailbone descends. As the ribs telescope up, the neck bones. And practice feeling the breath land in the body. Sometimes we work with the breath in more active ways. Moving it, sending it, delivering it, brightening it. <laughs> Okay. And we'll just start to turn the rib cage, the torso, so the left side of my ribs face that left inner leg. And keeping the rib cage face this way, release the hands. Inhale them out to the side, so this puts my left arm over my left leg somewhat. And then exhale, reaching forward. As I'm reaching with the arm, I'm also reaching and lengthening through the lung, through the intestines. And as we're lifting, reaching through that right arm, The ribs can start to find their emotion within those shoulder blades. And that motion of the rib cage spiraling is counter to the inner leg. So that inner leg is where we garner support to be able to turn and open and spiral the, the ribs and the torso. You can feel that movement, counter movement. And we can't just move in isolation, just like we don't heal in a vacuum or isolation. Everything in relationship. And one final move, position for the right arm, reaching it overhead. to complete that thought, because this is the practice we'll work with today, is that bioavailability, feeling how the body might request or absorb each and every breath. So feeling the breath land. I'm saying land, it's a, it's, there's a gentleness. 
It's a quality of a movement of absorption. This is a wonderful type of practice when we need um, a sense of rejuvenating and renewing and refreshing and repairing and restoring. And then inhale. Now sitting the hand down, walking the torso um, up and out. Then lion back, and uh, we'll get ready for some some low low guts breathing. <laughs> so, just in a broad a broad sense, one of the the things that helps us become. Uh, uh, enjoy this bioavailability, the absorbability, the grabability of some substance or nourishment is a little bit of an empty state. So let's go feet off the ground, the hands behind the head. Inhale the uh, head and upper back off the ground. And pausing, feel where the tailbone is. Exhale, send the left leg out. And we're staying with the exhalation. Staying with the exhalation. Because the point at which we think we're empty, we're done. We can actually get a little emptier. And sink, draw the belly in. Inhaling. Inhaling stems from the release of that low belly. Exhaling, reach out through the right leg. Just stay with the exhale, stay with the motion of exhale, the movement of the low belly. We may think or believe that we're done exhaling or empty, just stay with it. It's okay to be a little bit empty, sink, sink belly, and then inhaling. The right knee bends. Feel how the gut can absorb that breath. Absorption is, is a perspectival practice. Feel where the tip of the tailbone is. Exhale, left leg outreaches. Track with the low belly. The process of emptying. So part of these abdominal moves, one of their intents, their movement intents, is to be somewhat evacuative. So I'm letting myself feel empty, get empty, being empty, and then linger empty, sinking the belly in. Inhaling, bend knee. Let's continue. So just at your pace. There's a process of emptying. Maybe the sensations of emptying. We encounter some of our habits around empty. Lingering on empty. Exploring empty. Releasing to feel that just how available breath is for absorption. Right. right, and this is, this is time-tested wisdom. What is it we absorb immediately following a fast?
We're just creating micro, just little mini moments. Little miniature micro fast moments as we just simply study the emptying process, the empty sensation, the empty Nature doesn't like a void, <laughs> but as we create these little void moments, these little fast moments, and so that nature, prana, breath, can just whoosh <laughs> right into that, that clearing. So finish the round that you're on. Let's just do one more on each side. Finish the pair that you're on, and one more each side, a little mini micro fast, a mini void, and feel how nature kind of rushes right in. And don't believe me on it, create it, feel it for yourself. There's a mechanics, there's an element of mechanics to all of this. So none of it is belief, predicated on belief. These are mechanics. We can teach ourselves some of these internal mechanics, how to shift energy or alter our attention or develop some way of relating to our breath. But how you will teach and learn for yourself might be different than the way I, I teach and learn for myself. All right, the other item we're playing with today, if we're gonna make voids, <laughs> straddle lifting through. So while lying, we'll bring the legs up vertical, separate them widely, we'll get right into it, inhale, floating the head, the upper back off the ground, exhaling, outreaching. And here's kind of the cool, the cool thing, we can't really create a void, right? As we start to discern space, that emptiness, it's not a void. Sink the belly in. Inhale. Into the low back. Feel the top rim of sacrum. Exhaling, tailbone shifts. Legs out reach left and right. We start to sense a bit more space in and through those hip sockets, sinking the belly in. And if we're studying these empty moments, inhale, you're probably anything but empty or void. If I reach with sensation, Continue, let's do five more together at our own pace, but together.
That's really cool. The guts area feels a lot different these uh, today. It's really nice when we can keep coming back and using the proverbial momentum. I get the sense it's a softer place for some of us. When you're entirely through, you will have set your head down. You can just manually hand help your, your legs together, your feet to the ground. Let's turn onto our right side. I'm going to set up a lounge lizard. It took me a moment. There's lots of lounges and lunges and things. We have an optional move of placing an object like a a slender block or a, or a roll between the legs. It's entirely optional. I'm going to go with it. Not too wide. You don't want this, this top leg to be like... in the clouds. <laughs> so my right heel, right hip, right hand aligned. I'm using the left hand like a little kickstand. And connecting to breath. Now I'm going to just suggest that as we're coming fresh <laughs> off of those abdominals, which are these little mini, mini breath fasts, just play with that exhalation and that emptying process right here gently though because as you're drawing and recruiting those lower belly structures you may be pulling a little bit more through this this area right here And we'll release, bend knees. Let's uh, remove any prop for right now. And we're gonna make a turn. So we're just doing one side for, for now. We'll shift back a little bit. And then set up elbows, knees. We're gonna break up our dolphin today. So we're setting up dolphin. Exhaling, entering dolphin. And I 
was her right leg that was on the bottom, her right side probably got that stretch from a go. So we're going to raise the right leg off the ground. That right leg outreaching helps start to connect us into that, that waist and that hip and that low belly area, the, the intestines and the guts. Some of us may have gotten a, a lead in on some small intestine works. So we're going right up into these intestines, right up underneath the right lung. There you go. Good. Inhale. Let's bring that right foot down. We'll set the knees down. And we'll do these two things uh, other side. So now I'm setting up on my left side for... <sighs> lounge lizard words <laughs> so i got my left heel left hip left hand get a prop between the legs this is optional So if we've been playing small intestine together, feel how this inner left leg can take you right into the peritoneum, the, the encapsulating tissue all around the intestines, the So I'm using the prop, I'm using the inner left leg. The inner left leg line to take, you can use that to take you right into the, the small intestine area. And we'll release. We'll remove the prop. We'll do a little, little set up move here and inhaling the elbows under the shoulders, the toes curled under, exhale, press the knees off the ground. We re-enter dolphin. Inhaling the left leg lifts off the ground. Reaching that left leg out. And reaching that left leg out, maybe that starts to connect us into those small intestines.
There you go. There they are. So this will be also the the descending colon going into the sigmoid into the rectum. And inhale, we'll set that left foot down, we'll set the knees down. Inhale the hands under the shoulders, exhaling downward dog. Inhale, left foot forward. Take a warrior position and modify it with uh, placing that right heel up or however. I want you to have access to this right leg, being able to engage the inner right leg. So if you pop that heel down, you may or may not have that ability to kind of sense that inner leg line. So you, you adjust that heel as you, as you need. Inhale, telescope the ribs toward the sky, the right arm. We're moving into a twisting warrior or a, a twisting lunge, whatever we need to call it. I'm actually starting to twist with my inner legs, my inner feet, my inner legs. It's already. As I'm twining that left thigh over my right, my right thigh behind my left. Already that's begetting that twist, that's spiraling. So you can play right there if you want. There's some kind of tweezing, twining. I'm already twisting. And uh, bringing the right arm over the left thigh is it's purely optional. Pyramid, inhale and wind. We can set hands down to ground or blocks. Adjust the right foot forward, exhaling, sink the weight back, back into the right heel. Now we are putting that right heel down. And allowing the head, the neck, to hang, to relax downward. Those of you who set up the, um, the your, your pyramid stance in that traditional heel alignment way, which is really cool, you can play with that twining action there. It works really well in that narrow um, heel to heel alignment stance. I know some of you like to set your feet more widely apart, that's fine. The twining, the inner leg engagement will be a little more challenging to access. So sometimes I'll prop my hands up just to play with that twining leg movement. Like I'm drawing the left thigh over the right, drawing, pulling the right thigh under the left. If your knees are bent, this will be challenging to access. I prop my hands up so I can straighten my legs and engage the inner legs. Vertical splits. So moving hands, blocks forward, maybe a foot. 
Inhale the right leg skyward, exhaling. And I'm not moving my legs physically in the air, but I can twine them so it's an energetic feeling for those inner leg lines. In fact, let's try this out. Leave your left hand on the ground or on the block. If your balance uh, allows, place your right palm on your inner left thigh. Yep. Right palm, inner left thigh, good. Now press your inner left thigh into the palm and palm presses the inner left thigh. Aha, good. And release the head and the neck. Aha, good. Let's get, oh, 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 we need to breathe though. <laughs> So inhaling, the palm presses the thigh, the thigh presses the palm, exhaling legs, reaching out even more uh, energetically, releasing core, releasing spine and head earthward. Inhale, place the right foot down behind you, hands to ground, exhaling, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Or cobra. Exhaling, downward dog. Right, so we're setting up basically a warrior stance by inhaling your right foot forward. Basically because you might be adjusting that left heel up. So you can feel that inner left leg. I'm exaggerating a little bit just so you can start to get a, a little sense of this. Right. This is just all my thighs. I'm just kind of engaging with my feet and my inner legs. Right. You see how much spiraling and twist really does come from the feet, from the legs. I'm going to just add. That arm touching the thigh. Pyramid. Inhale and wide. The sitting hands down. Stepping left foot forward, exhaling, shifting the weight back, sinking, settling that left heel down. You're playing with an, um, a, a narrow or a traditional stance where the right heel aligns with the left heel. Get those hands propped up that you can straighten each leg. You're engaging the leg muscles all around the knee. And then you can work that twining action where the right leg is being pulled, drawn over the left, the left behind the right. It's like an, a static helicopter move of the legs. There you go. That's it. Exactly. It's just distinguishing the guts from the legs. They're... There you go. <laughs> there you go. 
vertical splits. We'll shift the hands forward a foot, inhale, the left leg scale. If balance permits, we'll do this little extra, just put some, some more RPMs <laughs> the bones. Bring your left palm to the inner right thigh, to the inseam, and tweeze that right thigh into the palm, pressing that palm into the inner right thigh. Let it help engage the legs so there's there can be a more vibrant engagement. And then deepen breath. Releasing through the rest of core, so legs very engaged, core soft. This is one of the beautiful kind of redistribution uh, features of this this modality is we can engage in this lower body in a really exquisite way. And allow our torso, our head to relax a bit. Receive the benefits of all this incredible leg energy. Maybe it's available to be absorbed, to be brought into those places that need a little extra support. Inhale, we'll set the left foot down, exhaling. Step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog, cobra is option. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, step any foot forward. We're gonna take a wide stance. We're gonna work a little bit of an egg beater move. So then now the legs will be stationary and we're kind of twisting or spiraling the trunk. So if you need to see the move, um, I can broad, broadly basically show you. The arms will be reaching in different directions, okay, which renders my torso almost like a, an auger, just kind of spiraling toward the earth. So when I reach, I'm gonna do it up here, I'm never clotheslining my, my face. I'm never gonna have an arm across my neck so if you feel like uh -huh, we need to adjust. <laughs> so for this first one, I'll pass the right hand toward my left shin and the left arm overhead toward my right shin. Now if we have some shoulder issues, oops. Oh you can always use a strap to make it a little nicer on some of the shoulder parts. So my left arm in this case is off of my forehead. It's over my head. Allow the head and the neck to hang out. And release. 
Nice. When we go the other way, it'll be the left arm will pass, say, over the chest, and the right arm will pass over our head. So it'll be this kind of, I'm using this strap to just help the connection, so uh, I'm using it on my top arm this time. You don't have to use a strap, but um, if you can't afford to, pin or have your shoulder compressed. That strap can be really nice. So again, egg beater. If I fold first, left hand is reaching for the right shin. The right arm reaching overhead grabs the left shin. There should be no arm that's like across your jaw or neck or face. The arms are clear of the head. There you go. Mm -hmm. And as I'm using both hands to gently pull, there's a spirillic motion of the torso. Oh, connect a big old sweet breath. These look great, everyone. These are, they look like they feel beneficial. <laughs> Get a nice sweet old breath in there, especially up in those, those upper ribs, all the way up there. All right, when we release, set the hands down will help the legs together and we'll lie back for Shavasana. Even though we could keep doing this all day. <laughs> Tell work you can't come in. <laughs> Allowing the spine, the back body. To feel utterly supported by the ground. So I'm suggesting that we select to feel support. Whatever it is we think about the word support or believe about our needing support, what if we were simply to select to feel it? Just as we might select to see beauty or to see the color blue, right? What if we were to select to feel the ground support our spine, our weight. And what if we could select to feel supported by every one of these practitioners here? And every one of these practitioners who may take this in a week, in a year from now. So 
It starts to get big fast. When you're ready. Bend knees. Turn to a side and press to seated. Namaste.